And we're live. Welcome to the latest Danger and Play podcast. This is Mike, and I'm here with my host, co-host, Jay. How you doing, guys? Today we're going to talk about TRT, training, nutrition, and several other related subjects. And speaking of training, tonight we just trained HIT for the first time in a while, and how's that? Wow. I mean, guys, there really is no more productive form of training out there. I don't give a shit. What you're doing, German volume trainings, you know, split sets, supersets, you know, seven by seven, some of these, you know, Hanny Rambot, any of these professional level caliber training, you know, they're all good, they're all productive, they all have their own merits, but absolutely, with unequivocally, nothing beats HIT training. I mean, literally, it is, is it's, it's so difficult and so intense that if you don't completely have your body and your mind's full attention to every rep and every second of every movement, you're just you're wasting your time because you only get one set yeah hit for those of you who don't know it's called high intensity training it was sort of created or popularized however you want to put it by mike menser and it gets a bad well, rep actually because, really arthur jones and yeah, mike menser right and it gets a bad rep because people say well how can you only train one set to failure and, and the the reason it gets a bad rep is because if you actually train with a real hit trainer and there aren't many in the country you'll understand that one set to failure is more than enough Right. I mean, it's, 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 it's really, it's, it's, it's semantical in a lot of ways because one set, when you do an HIT set, is really, it could potentially be a combination of drop sets, a rest pause, a breathing set, um, a, a set where you do a 10 second eccentric, you know, which is eccentric is a lowering phase of the rep or something like that. But basically it's just a super, super, super high intense set that takes your musculars to full contractual failure. Yeah. It, it, it takes, it, takes it to a different level and, and you can always tell when you've trained HIT because you leave the gym and I'm, I'm looking for sugar I'm, I'm looking for these uh, my goddaughter's uh, sugar packets these little gummy bears or whatever the hell they are and they just ate about like five or six packets as I eat a Twizzler as he says yeah, that because it, com- it completely destroys your body so the reason I'm bringing that up even though we're not going to talk about HIT today is hopefully we can have a special guest who is actually probably the leading authority on HIT training yeah, in the world, um, Marcus Reinhardt. You can Google him, guys, if you don't know who he is. But uh, he's actually a close personal friend of both Mike and I, and um, I'm sure he'll come on the show at some point. Yeah, he's he's the one. He initially trained Jay um, in HIT, and I thought, you know, HIT is BS. And then um, I saw what it did to Jay's body, and then Jay started training me in HIT, and I thought, well, holy, holy hell, you know. And, and as we said in the first podcast, the only reason we don't train HIT consistently is, is because if you have a cognitively demanding job, it's really hard to do long term. Yeah, I mean, any type of demanding job with HIT training because, and I want to move on to other topics in a second. We'll talk about HIT in itself in another vlog, hopefully with Marcus. But it's so physically intense that you, you have to really, you know, get into the whole mind-muscle connection, but you have to literally have 100% focus to the job at hand while you're training HIT style. And as Mike says, I mean, it's it's so mentally and physically exhausting after that. If you're not, you know, in a place where you can rest a little bit at night or you have something going on the following day, it's not the type of training for you. Right. So there you go, guys. We will be talking about that soon. And if we get Marcus on, that'll be a blast. So right now, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm sorry because we're going to talk about TRT. And we got a bunch of TRT questions. And all I'm going to say to a lot of you listeners is I'm really sorry you have shitty doctors oh disclaimer this is not medical <laughs> advice I cannot give medical advice I'm not a licensed med- medical practitioner etc get do your own research but guys I am I'm really sorry really sorry that you're not getting adequate medical care so although this isn't medical advice this is science advice anything that I say or that he says you can look it up. You can do your own research. You can go to your doctor and um, armed well, with not facts. Your, not your doctors. Yeah, well, you'll find a new doctor, and, and we'll talk. We'll talk about how to find. Talk about how to find a real doctor. So we'll we'll start off with a quick one. Um, I f- didn't talk about this in the first one. The guy felt a little, you know, left out. So I feel bad, bro. Well, do you do you first? What is the best start in TRT protocol using test HCG and Arimidex? What to inject on what days slash what doses, etc. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll take the first stab. Um, so really it depends on your age. Um, you know, TRT is this mystery, you know, uh, acronym, you know, it's obviously it's, st- it stands for uh, hormonal replacement or, um, what is, what is it? Testosterone, t- testosterone replacement therapy, whatever. I mean, you know, there's a million different ways and you know, the acronym stands for a lot of different things. But if you're a 30 year old guy, 
you know, and you're at the age where Mike and I say, okay, it's okay for you now to start taking anabolic steroids and taking, you know, anti-aging drugs and whatever it is you're going to take. The, the right dose is something that's hard to like tell you. Like I can't just say it's X milligrams, but you, you want to start with the, with the less is more principle. So if you're going to use testosterone, you want to use, and, 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 and again, this goes, this is counterintuitive to what most practitioning endocrinologists out there are. And again, Mike and I will talk about more about them in a second, but you want to use a fast acting testosterone. Okay. Something that clears your system quickly. Um, growth hormone, if you can get human grade gear, which, you know, is, is, is manufactured in the United States or Chinese, it really doesn't matter. Um, you probably want to be on anywhere from 25 to 50 milligrams a day of testosterone propanate. There's other forms, but we're just going to use prop because it's easy, easily, easily accessible, readily and widely available out there. Uh, growth hormone, again, it depends on your goals, what you're trying to do, but for just the guy who's just looking to get a bit bigger, look a little bit better naked, anti-aging, better skin, you know, better sex, better sleep, all those things, maybe one to two IUs a day, maybe one AM. AM dosage, PM dosage, and then HCG. I don't want to get into like PCT, which is post cycle therapy or anything like that. You don't need HCG. I mean, HCG is great, you know, to stimulate your your Leydig cells and your and, and your testes to, to really reinflate your testes every eight to ten weeks. But if you are somebody that truly is going, you know, HRT is not somebody who is in in need of HCG. HCG is for somebody who cycles, who comes on and off, and at the end of a cycle needs HCG for a little bit of restoration. HCG HCG is actually a very, very, very garbage drug. There's so much better, more scientific, better responding stuff out there in the market today. But HCG is a tried and true drug that guys have used to reinflate their testes and increase latex cell uh, sperm production. Right. Um, Remedex, serums, aromatose inhibitors. I would yeah. say, I would say, if you're on a TRT dose, well, okay. First of all, let's take a step back. Uh, there is there there are two ways to answer this question. If you go to a doctor, a traditional doctor, and the doctor is actually, yeah, kind of cool, they're going to give you what's called testosterone sipinate. Now, here's what that means. Sipinate is attached to the testosterone molecule, and it, it um, slows down how quickly the testosterone enters your bloodstream and how quickly your body processes it. So that's called a longer ester testosterone injection. So you would take sipinate, say, maybe once a week is what they'll tell you. And they'll say 100 to 200 milligrams once a week, and then you'll get blood work done, and the blood work, they'll see if your testosterone level is in the magical range that they think applies. Fine. If that's what you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. Now, what is actually the best way to take TRT? The best way to take TRT is you take what's called testosterone propanate, which is a really short uh, ester. It's a fast-acting testosterone. It mimics the body's natural production much more closely. Right. It, it hits peak testosterone levels, um, peak relatively early on, and then they fall right away, and you take more prop the next day. So you take prop today, prop tomorrow, so you're not having these huge um, peaks and valleys of testosterone. If you have good prop, you just run it in an insulin syringe, you run it under some hot water, you can inject it into your delts or into your quads as a painless injection. It doesn't leave any scars. That's like the, the, the way to do it. Now, not everybody has access to anti-aging clinics. In an anti-aging clinic, they're going to backfill insulin syringes for you with quality prop, and you shoot up every day. And if you can do that, great. Do you need a Remedex or anything else? You know, that, that depends. Like when you get your blood work done, and we're going to do a whole, whole talk on blood work, you're going to check your estrogen levels. Me, I don't need ever need any kind of anti-estrogen. I don't there's another thing called serum which is like selective estrogen receptor modulator or something like that. So they're AI, they're AI in serums and I don't need any of that on low dose testosterone and I personally think 200 mg a week for most guys is going to be a, a good TRT dose. Right. I don't think you need any AIs. HCG some guys, you know, well, they'll, they'll say testosterone shrinks your balls a little bit. And I say, yeah, it, it does. And I don't really care. Right. If you want really big pit bull, you know, I haven't been neutered balls. <laughs> go ahead, you know, take your HCG. Right. And yeah. there are pros and cons to that. And some people say HCG is actually bad because it's HCG is telling your body to produce test. But because you're injecting test, you're telling your body not to produce test. So you're sending conflicting signals to your body. Eh, you know, whatever. Guys have been doing HCG, they're fine. Right. It's a cosmetic thing only, though. You don't actually need it. The only thing I would add to what Mike was saying, in my experience, 
the the more endomorphic you are, okay. So you know, there's the three body types: the mesomorphic, the uh, ectomorphic, and the endomorphic. Endomorphic is the fatter, slower metabolism, like Northern European white slothy type dudes. You know, it's hard for you to like show ever see veins when you train or whatever like that. But if you're if you're an endomorphic type guy and you carry a lot of estrogenic fat, now estrogenic fat is the kind of fat that you're gonna find in your lower back, on your hips. Um, your upper back, like estrogenic fat, a number one deposit for a lot of guys is in their upper back, okay? Um, so if you're one of those type guys, you should definitely be using an AI or a CERM, most likely, because the more estrogenic fat that you have, well, guess what? I mean, the more sensitive that is to, to estrogen, you know, overproduction of estrogen from the steroid. Right, that you're L- lose the fat, though. Don't exactly. Be, don't be fat and do TRT, well, you know? the problem is, is that there's guys out there listening, you know, who think that they're not fat and they're going to inject right. testosterone. Right. So, I mean, I'm giving you guys the garden variety. Mike's right. I mean, you should always be lean. You know, we're not getting into, like, the who's and the what's of the guys that should be using gear and shouldn't. But if you're going to do, and to answer the guy's first question, if you're going to use it, if you're if you're an endomorphic guy, you're kind of fat. You should definitely, definitely consider using an AI the entire time. There you go. And if you aren't sure if you're fat, you're probably a little fat, and that's okay. I'm not Mr. Ripped myself. I try to keep body fat under control, but whatever. I'm not shredded. All right. Good topic. Let's talk about the next question. A common question, and this is a really one easy one to answer. What have you guys seen regarding hair loss of people using gear? So it's a, it is a simple answer. It's hair loss is genetic. Okay, there's nothing you can do about hair loss. It comes from your mom's side of the family. If you have male pattern baldness, it's called alopecia, the scientific name. You have nothing. There's nothing you're gonna do. And I got news for you, man. Using gear is gonna exacerbate it. You're gonna shed hair faster. You know, Mike and I don't give a shit. You know, luckily we're blessed with um, you know the genetics for not. We don't have hair loss. But guess what? If we had hair loss, you think we would give a fuck? We would shave our heads and we would look like Mr. Clean. It doesn't matter. Girls love that shit. All these dumbass guys out there, they're so concerned about like losing their hair over steroids. Are you fucking serious? Would you rather look good, menacing, women walk up to you, people respect you in public because you have a good build, you have a V taper, whatever, and you have a shaved fucking head? Women find that attractive. I mean, these guys out there that are afraid to lose their hair by using steroids, I mean, give me a break, man. You've got shit all fucked up. Yeah, yeah, your, your priorities are wrong. And a lot of that is... um. You know, guys like to talk about taking, I've taken the red pill, bro, so I totally understand women. But the, the red pill is about the whole fucking matrix. You've been brainwashed by cosmetic companies and shampoo companies to say you have to have a full head of hair. Now, me, yeah, I have a fucking beautiful head of hair or whatever. Yep. It looks great, but, and testosterone doesn't make it fall out. But if I started to lose it, oh, well, dude, I'll still look fucking good, dude. Right. I'll still have fucking big, broad shoulders and a thick exactly. back and a narrow waist, and I'll, and I'll look jacked and diesel, and, and women will still love me. Hair is psychological. Like, guys that have a thick head of hair, they think that women are into that. Women don't give a rat's ass about your hair. Women care about your charisma, the way you carry yourself in public, how wide your shoulders are, you know, how you walk, your confidence. I mean, we're not getting into that right now, but again, hair loss is or, or, hair loss is such an over-exaggerated thing for men. And it's just, I feel bad for guys that are so concerned they go out and get extensions and hair implants and all this other nonsense. It's like, women don't give a shit. Yeah, it's way down the list. I'll, I guess I'll put it, put it to you this way. If you have to worry about your hair, then you better you better have a six-figure income. Right. You better have fucking, if not a six-pack, you better be like firm around the stomach. You better have right. like such a huge drop between your shoulders and your waist right. that you can't buy a suit off the rack. Right. And if that is you, then you can worry about your hair. Right. But until that is you, you need to have other priorities. Exactly. But in, in any event, it's not going to speed up hair loss. All right. Next question. How long... After starting TRT, do people start to notice a difference? That's a great question. Um, if you remember, if any of you guys were listening to our first blog, you know we talked about perfect nutrition, perfect rest, perfect training, all those things. Um, assuming all of those things are going on, um, you'll see you'll see results from growth hormone tests within two to three weeks. Okay, now with that said, again, your age level, how long you've been training, all those other things come into play. Um, Steroids are nothing but an ancillary. You know, you can take, Mike and I can see this, and we've seen this with young guys especially, they take a gram of test a week, they eat McDonald's cheeseburgers, um, and they train once or twice a week, and then on the weekend go out and get wasted, piss drunk wasted two nights a week. Guess what, they gain nothing. You know what they gain? They get zits on their back, they get waterlogged, they have massive hormonal rages, they go crazy half the time. So, you know, the reality is, is like, if you got all the things the other things which are more important than the gear 
But if all the other things are dialed in and you're using the gear and, it, you know, assuming your gear is not fake, and we can get into that in a minute too, um, you should be able to notice things within three to four weeks. And what I mean by notice things, and Mike can add to this, is, you know, four or five pounds up on the scale, improved strength, um, definitely improved endurance and stamina when you're training. Um, and then probably just you, the feel of pumped, you know, the psychological a aspect of it of like, I feel a little bit more pumped. I look a little bit more pumped. I feel like I may be a little bit more waterlogged or bloated or whatever because the steroids are making you carry a little water under the skin. But that's 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 the reality. You, you should see something within three to four weeks. Yeah, it, it, you notice the difference is kind of an interesting phrase because what well, a difference, like what do you mean by difference? But Within a couple of weeks, you'll notice that you'll have morning wood again if you haven't had morning wood in a right. while. When you do have an erection, here's what's funny when guys say, well, steroids, they, they shrink your dick. No, they shrink your testicles. <laughs> Fucking idiots. Right. They actually make your dick bigger. Right. When you get on, when you get, right. when you get on test, you'll probably, you're going to be thicker and you're going to be a little bit longer. You're going to be more vascular. When you look down, like the head of your cock is going to be like more purple. So you're going to have like much better erections. You're going to have more frequent erections. And you're going to notice just a sort of like, Okay, man. Okay, man. I'm good. I got this. Let's do shit. Right. You know, your motivation, call it what you will, motivation. You're just like, yeah, I got it. And like another thing you're going to notice is you're going to notice a greater sense of certainty. Now, yes. scientific studies have shown that people with higher testosterone, they are less mealy mouth. Right. They're not like, man, should, should I do this? Should I do that? They're decisive. Yeah. Yes. You're just like, okay, fuck it. This is what I'm going to do. Right. And let's do it. So you, all of a sudden, people are just kind of look look to you for more like leadership because suddenly, instead of being like a, a sheep who's kind of walking around waiting for somebody to tell you what to do, you're just kind of like, nah, man, like this is what I'm going to do. Like here's what we need to do. So that'll happen, you know, three, four, five weeks. Within eight weeks, if you have legit TRT, and this is only TRT. If you're only doing, say, 200 milligrams of test a week, after eight weeks – and you're training hard and your diet's clean, people will notice a difference. Yes. People will be like, you look big. You Now, you won't look right. like steroid huge, but within eight weeks, within three weeks, you'll notice something. With eight, eight, within eight weeks, people are going to start to talk. Yeah, they'll say, Mike's right. They'll say to you, oh, wow, you look like you've been in the gym. You've, you've been really working hard, huh? You know? And then, you know, we can get into that long after that, but that, you know, that's, we're talking about TRT again. We're not talking about cycling. So, you know, if you, if you, if you, if you choose to go on TRT, Okay, and again, depending on your age and, 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 and hypothetically you're at the age where we say it's okay, which is, you know, you're 30 or whatever, 28, 29, 30, you're not coming off. Okay, I, I don't want, I want to save this for another topic, but there is no such thing as cycling. I mean, you know, the kids in their 20s, you know, they want to do that. That's good. You want to have kids. The only reason, and Mike and I have talked about this for over a decade, the only reason that you should ever come off of gear, and again, this is assuming that you're doing it intelligently and you're not overdosing and blah, 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 but is, is if you want to have children. Other than that, coming off gear is absolutely nonsensical. You are going to lose your gains. You're going to have psychological, you know, bouts of depression because as Mike said, testosterone, it levels your mood. It makes you feel more positive. It gives you an edge about you. You become more decisive. You know, essentially think of it like this. It makes a beta more alpha. It makes an alpha a supreme alpha. Okay. So you, you, you take that away and think of all the negative attributes that are going to result. I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense to come off. Now that said, you can, you can, you can, you know, Mike and I talk about this and I don't want to talk about it now, but you go from what is called blast cruise. You know, you take, let's say you have a 10 week cycle, you're competing in a competition or you're doing something, a photo shoot, you want to just look good for a beach vacation, whatever. You do something in bursts dosage wise for a certain amount of time and then you go way lower and you just stay on a modicum or a, a minimal amount of it and then you go back up again. But I mean, there's no point as a man to have low testosterone ever. I mean, literally none. Right, yeah. Well, one thing that always cracks me up is people will say, yo, yo, ro roid rage, bro, ro roid rage. And I'm thinking, well, well, first, motherfucker, like, I've always been fucking confrontational in the right. sense of, like, I don't look for trouble, but if, like, you fucking, if you talk shit to me, you know, if you bump into me and I you say we're trouble. cool, f fuck you, you know, and I've always been that way long before test. The truth is, when you're on test, you're actually less moody because totally. who, who's more, who's moodier, men or women? Yeah. Women. Right. Well, why are they moodier? Because of estrogen. Their, their fucking right. hormones are completely different. Yes. So when you're on testosterone, you're actually less moody. So why would you not want to just have stable moods and just always be like on, right. always be in like a state of like a fucking alpha zen? Right. It just isn't making sense. So yeah, there's no reason. There's no reason to go off. There's no reason to mess around with PCT. And, and sp he has a couple of kids. So speaking of children, here's our next question. This is kind of a comment. And this is kind of the dumb shit that I deal with. I usually delete this shit from the blog. 
you become permanently hooked on TRT. <laughs> permanently is, of course, in all caps, because this fucking guy is really serious. So I researched how to raise it for myself, blah, blah, blah. I did run, wind sprints, blah, blah, blah. And then here's what he says. Anybody who says you cannot raise your own testosterone is an idiot or a liar. Or too lazy to do it the right way. Now, I'm not trying to shit stir, right? He's totally not trying to shit stir, right? Sure, some might not be able to raise it naturally, but you have to try. The detriment is you have lost nothing. The benefit is you do not get hooked on TRT hooked. permanently. Hooked like heroin? And, 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 of course, and of course, permanently is um, in all caps. So... Let, let's make that into a question, the Ducharoni. Can you go off TRT and restore your natural levels of testosterone, even second. if you've been on it for years? In a second. In absolutely a second. In fact, there are drugs out there for guys, you know, bodybuilding, pro bodybuilders, guys that have left the game. Um, it's called HMG. It's a it's a it's a form of HCG. It's a it's a little bit stronger acting, and it actually is. Um, it's actually another fertility drug that they give to women to increase. Um, uh, pro- prolactin uh, increases in women, which you know makes women more pro- fertile. It does the opposite in men. But um, HMG, you could use a, a, you could probably have a doctor prescribe HMG for you for like three to four weeks, and you'll be shooting very, you'll be very virile and very fertile, and you can have kids. I mean, it's very, very rare that you can't come off of HRT and be completely normal. But yeah. again, I mean, what the fuck would you come off? I mean, I mean, okay, you want kids, okay? But first off, if you want kids, you shouldn't be on gear permanently anyway because it, it's it, it, it you know there's it, there's no point in being on gear permanently the, although kids. although he he's had two kids so if you're counting on trt being a, a right. viable form of birth control you might have a rude awakening well coming. it's it's funny because like when i was with my ex-wife and when you know when i when i got pregnant we got pregnant between my ages of 36 and 39 but um we tried for a solid year and i wasn't using any gear and I went off and I used, I didn't use HMG, I used HCG, but I didn't have any problems. I mean, I, at that time in my life, I wasn't on gear permanently. I didn't really start getting on gear permanently until I was like 35 or 36 um, and nothing like now, but um, we were trying. So, you know, as Mike says, I mean, you know, even gear, even at high doses, or not high doses, I've never been on high doses, but at just long-term suppression, um, you still can get pregnant. So, you know, this nonsense that this guy's writing about, I mean, he clue, he's clueless, utterly clueless. Right, right. Yeah, you go off, you can take tryptamorol too, which is, a, is a, a peptide, and you can have normal testosterone within six weeks. Right. Yeah, the, those six weeks, you're going to be pissy and whining. Right. The Hallmark commercial comes on, you're going to be crying. <laughs> right. It's like quitting cigarettes, but it, it's a six-week kind of thing. Right. So, yeah, a big whoop, you know, and you'd have been miserable probably because you wouldn't have had high testosterone for a lot longer than six weeks anyway. Oh, yeah. So... So big deal. Yeah, so that guy, he's an idiot. Anyone who tells you can't come off is an idiot. Anyone who tells you can't has, have kids is an idiot because how many kids does Arnold have? How many kids right. does Stallone have? How many kids do all the, the golden age bodybuilders have? Right. Jay Cutler? I, I don't know if Jay Cutler no, has Jay kids, but have any kids. plenty of pro bodybuilders have yeah, kids, and many, they're taking plenty many, of doses. Many. So, yeah, you want to have a kid, you go off, you restore your natural um, testosterone production, your sperm count increases, and then you go have kids. Big whoop. Not right. hard. Um, it doesn't have to be permanent. Uh, the guy's an idiot. Most people who talk about TRT are idiots. And usually I delete those comments, but I thought that was good comic relief. So next question. This is a serious one, um, but it is almost as funny. Is testosterone cream any good? <laughs> okay, so coming from someone that's actually used testosterone cream, again, from the first blog, when I first started taking um, ster- anabolic steroids when I was 29 or 30, I don't remember how old I was. I was using a anti-aging clinic um, in Orange County. I won't name the names because the guys went down in the whole Bulko scandal with Major League Baseball players because the clinic I was working with was supplying like hundreds of Major League Baseball players. That's another story for another day. But I used the transdermal. Um, I used the clear cream. They remember back in the day they called it the yeah. clear. Um, and I used um, the, the, the testosterone, uh, like a yellow molding cream. I've used them all. Creams are absolutely worthless. Why are they worthless? Because you can't control the delivery of the dosage. It just going through transdermal absorption through the skin is garbage at best. You know, transdermal absorption is, 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 is just all over the place due to food consumption, you know, due to the way your body metabolizes food, due to the way your sweat glands work. I mean, there's just so many things that get in the way for creams. Now that said, you can take cream and have an elevation in your testosterone, but it's also so poorly, 
um, administrated by the body or absorbed and used by the body that your body also has horrible uh, estrogenic reactions to, to creams. I mean, I've seen more guys with bitch tits and gymnocasty and all those other issues that come from, you know, elevated estrogen from creams than I have seen anything else. So, I mean, stay away from creams. If you have an anti-aging doctor, an endocrinologist who tells you to go that route, fire them and find somebody else because it's worthless, utterly yeah. worthless. Yeah, the, the one exception would be if you're Alex Rodriguez or, right. or Lance Armstrong right. and, and, you know, you have the special guys and they know to rub down your skin a little bit. Right. Yeah, but but that, I'm, I'm assuming that that's not the kind of cream you guys no. are talking about. And also, let's say you use cream because you're afraid of a needle. Well, okay. Which is ridiculous. You can't touch kids for four hours. Right. You can't hug your girlfriend. If you hug your girlfriend, you might think, oh, that's cool. She'll have testosterone. She'll be hornier. No. no she's going to get go facial insane. hair. Um, she's going to be like, go go loony, and she's going to have an Adam's apple. So you can't touch anybody for four hours. You, you can't play with your kids or your goddaughters or no. whatever. It, it's nonsense. If you're, if you're afraid of a needle, you should probably actually be on TRT because <laughs> right. it's like one of those like catch-22. It's like, I, don't sh- I can't take TRT because I don't like needles, but it's like the fact that you don't like needles probably means you fucking need a needle. Everybody has needle phobia. I mean, you know, I don't want to stay any time on this, but I mean, I could tell you stories of my first injections at Mike's same way. I mean, all of us have needle phobia. Just get over it, man. Fucking grow a pair. Yeah, it's no big deal. So um, next question. Um, this is I feel for you, bro. My doctor prescribes me 200 milligrams every two weeks. Wow. He might go up to 250 if my blood work showed <laughs> I needed more. All right. Uh, I'll take a quick stab at this. We'll see what Jay has to say. Here's what I would do. Um, if that's all you can do and you can't get testosterone elsewhere, I would take a 100 milligram shot once a week. Or I would take a 50 milligram shot twice a week. I sure as fuck would not take 200 milligram every two weeks. Now, oh, is this bro science? Well, no. Go Google testosterone sipinate peak plasma testosterone levels. <laughs> you can fucking pull up a Google Scholar search of an endocrinology textbook, and it'll show you when you achieve peak plasma levels, and that's going to be about four or five days, and then it's going to show you that testosterone levels plummet. So right. basically, you're going to have normal you know, testosterone for four or five days, and then for the next 11 days, it's going to plummet, and then your body is going to be like, well, should I Jesus. produce tests now or shouldn't I? And I know I'm kind of confused. You're going to have massive estrogenic side effects. <laughs> You're going to be so fucked up. Jesus so if that's, if that's all you can do, if oh that's all God. you can do, um, 50 milligrams. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, maybe that's his answer. Don't think, yeah. Maybe 50 milligrams twice a week, 100 milligrams once a week. But, but guy, by all means, man, do not take 200 milligrams every Tell me you lost your tell, tell me you lost your bottle. So here here's this is I'm not giving That's legal really advice. Good. That's what I would do. I would get my bottle. I would say, Doc, I went on uh, vacation and I lost oh, my bottle. And then it. and then I get a new bottle and then I'd take fucking do it right. Then I'd take hundred milligrams twice a week. Listen, man, Mike. Mike's being nice. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit more edgy and a little bit more to your face and authentic. If your doctor is giving you 200 milligrams every two weeks, your doctor is a, literally an embarrassment. I mean, that's a that's quackery. That's literally the fastest way to making you a eunuch. Okay. I mean, this is about. This is literally going to lower your already lowered amount. Your exogenous amount. This is what's going to happen. And just real quick, I don't want to go down a biochemical uh, 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 dissertation here, but. Your HPTA, which is your hypothalamic testicular axis, is a very fine, balanced, okay, running machinery in the human body, in your endocrine system. Such a low dosage of exogenous testosterone is going to literally throw that, that system, which is again, very, 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 very small, very precious, and very, very intricately controlled, so far off that you literally will, like Mike said, your body will, will malfunction and just go into haywire mode and you will be a eunuch. You will have literally no testosterone production. I mean, I can't even imagine that there are doctors out there so illiterate of just basic endocrinology that they would subscribe something like that. I mean, it's scary. It's almost like, Mike and I have talked about this, but they're afraid of actually prescribing the right dose because somebody is going to say, oh, you're prescribing testosterone to that man. You know that you don't know enough about to do that. You don't know the potential side effects or blah, blah, blah. I mean, but what they are doing is prescribing a low so low that they're going to fuck that guy up to the point where he will literally be, I mean, you know, we can go on and on about how testosterone will come back. Well, not if you have none. I mean, seriously. <laughs> well, it's funny you mention that because here's the second part of his question. The guy who is doing that said, I've noticed 
having a hard time shedding fat yes. and my man boobs are growing. Yes. No shit, buddy. Sorry, man. It's not your fault. I don't want to make a lie to your problem. Your doctor's the one fucking you up. The reason your fucking man boobs are growing, dude, and you're getting fat is, is for the same shit Jay just said because your estrogen levels are fucking through the roof because of all the testosterone you take or because of the, the improper dosing schedule. So he says... You briefly discussed using tryptorellin, HMG, or HCG if I were to stop TRT, but can I also take one of them in conjunction with TRT to help temper the gynecostia effects? Um, so no. So none of those drugs are going to do shit for gynecostia. You got to take a massive estrogen suppressing drug. You got to take a killer, an aromatase uh, a, a kill. I forget the word for it, but there's there's suppression drugs out there um, with some of the what, aromazin, yes. um, aromazin, exomestane. Yeah, exomestane, torrefamine. Yeah, there are some stuff out there that are like basically estrogen killers of the site. So they will literally specify the little receptors that are in your breasts and your areolas where you're susceptible to gynecostia. And for you guys out there that don't know what gymnocastia is, that's what they call as bitch tits. That's when you basically have a giant estrogenic lump in your boobs that is so thick and so rigid that it falls over your boob line so that you literally appear to have women boobs, like soft, fatty tissue. I mean, I could – some guys literally squirt – it's a, your mammary glands when they have so much estrogen and literally will, will you'll lactate guys literally squirt milk out of them okay when they're that bad so it's like that's not something to fuck around with but there are drugs out there that will selectively kill and, and, and attack the estrogen in the boobs and that's what you need to get so if you've got for that poor guy if you've got you know major uh, is, issues with gymnocastia there's two options, you know, and you may be past the point of no return, bro. You may have to have surgery. And I'm really sorry for that. But guess what? There's a million guys out there in North America that can have the surgery. It's a couple thousand bucks. It's laser. It's in and out. It's outpatient. You're good. It, you'll be fine. They literally can make you good new again. But if you don't need to go under the knife, you got to find some of those selective estrogen uh, uh, destroyer drugs. Right. And I do not talk about anything that is remotely illegal or gray market, but I will give you this clue. If you Google exomestane... And it's way too late at night for me to properly spell that. Right. Figure it out yourself. Um, research chemicals. Okay. You want to look for places that sell what are called research chemicals. Right. And I'm not going to say anything more. If you're smart enough to figure it out, <laughs> you're smart enough to figure it out. If you're not, well, sorry for you, buddy. Yeah, sorry. We're not going to give you the URLs, guys, but it, it, it's, not, it's not rocket science. Right. Okay. And speaking of dumb doctors, this is the one I alluded to earlier. Great info here. I got blood work done a month ago, and I'm at 148 nanograms per deciliter. Oh, my God. All right. For those of you that don't know, testosterone is given in a range. <laughs> it's measured in nanograms per deciliter, and it's given in a range. And based on this guy's Two, numbers. 200. Yeah, the scale is probably like 250 to like 1,400. Right. It varies. 1,400 is yeah. rare. Yeah, naturally. naturally yeah, really rare. And 200 is low, and it's not age-adjusted. So they just say, well, every man, you know, has testosterone in this range. And if you're at that level, you're at 70. So this guy has is 33, and he has the testosterone levels of a 70-year-old man. Maybe older. So he, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to go in for a 200 milligram injection once a month wow. for three months wow. when she, she, when she will test me again. <laughs> she, she, she won't test estrogen or let me inject at home, but she doesn't want to hear about aromatose inhibitors either. All right. He says, I live in a rural area, so I don't have any docs to choose them. All right. Let me tell you something, my friend. <laughs> I don't have. I don't give a fuck where you live. Get on a plane and go to Florida. Get on a plane and go to California. <laughs> Las Vegas. Yeah, hot wire, Priceline a tickets, a couple hundred bucks, right, buddy? Go to Vegas, find an anti-aging clinic, okay? Or or go on Yelp and look up endocrinologists, Yelp.com. Look up endocrinologists who actually would give you TRT. Do oh, your. Man. This is worse than not doing it, my friend. I'm really sorry. You're also receiving incompetent medical advice. <laughs> My heart goes out to you, but that's why you're listening to the podcast. That's why you're listening to Danger and Play, right. so that you can take the red pill and know the truth. But you are fucked, and if you do what she tells you to do, you are in for a world of hurt. Hey, man, the, you know the good news is you are listening to Danger and Play. We're not laughing at you. Um, we're, we're 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 just again, we're just we just continue to be astonished at the nonsense out there. I mean, the fact that that woman is giving you any kind of guidance, if she's actually an endocrinolo endocrinologist working with men as a woman, I mean, come on, dude. I mean, really? I mean, what does she know about the, the man's body? I mean, I, I mean, no offense. She may be a brilliant doctor. Well, she's clearly not a brilliant doctor. But, you know, it, this isn't being misogynistic or anything like that. This is just being, you know, authentic and, and, and real. I mean, come on. 
I mean, you shouldn't be seeing a, a woman for, you know, man's endocrinological problems or hormone replacement therapy. I mean, give me a fucking break, okay? So whatever you got to go, like Mike said, you can get it done. It's on the internet. You can buy fucking testosterone, you know, mail order. I mean, just as long as you have a credit card, just make it happen. Yeah, so again, although I do not advocate anybody violate any kind of laws, I'll give you a brief summary of how some people choose to procure the testosterone. Now, the good thing about testosterone is that it's really easy to tell if it's fake. If you're taking tests and you get lab work done and your test levels aren't really where they should be, work. yeah, and I'm going to show you where to order the testing and everything. That's coming up, guys. Don't get blood work done yet. Give me a week and we'll really let you know what to do. So even the most scumbag drug dealer isn't going to sell bunk tests. Now, it might be underdosed. It might not actually be as many milligrams per right. cc of product, but he can't sell you bunk stuff because any, any idiot can go to the, get his blood tested, then go on the boards and say, oh, so-and-so selling bunk stuff, and here's a copy of my bl blood, blood reports. So go on the web. They're called, just Google, steroid review site. Right. Okay? I'm not going to give you the URLs. I'm not going to tell you anything else. If you're not smart enough to figure it out, <laughs> then you're the kind of person who's going to get hurt and try to sue me or, you know, say that I gave you medical <laughs> advice and I didn't. Steroid review sites. There are a whole lot of them. The internet's a big place. <clears throat> as far as legalities go, don't order for anybody else. Don't sell it. The law treats people who use versus people who distribute completely different. First of all, I have never in my life and heard of anybody who actually got arrested for just possessing a couple vials of testosterone. I've never heard of it. Maybe right. it's happened. I've never heard of it. Guys who get picked up are the ones they order. Well, hey, I'm going to order for five guys, and I'm not going to pay for my stuff because I'll mark everybody's stuff up right. 25%. And then, I'll, well, now guess what? You're a drug dealer. Right. So don't be a drug dealer. If it's just you, all you need is a little bit of test. Look up a steroid review site, look into um, getting any kind of testosterone you want, and you just kind of have to be your own doctor. You know, really, in this time, you have to be your own doctor. You have to learn how to research and think for yourself. You have to know how to find stuff on the internet, and you can't trust these people anymore. No, it's, it's a shame that, you know, our system today doesn't really treat people how to critically think, and, you know, everybody is a sheeple for the most part. I mean, obviously, if you're listening to the show, you're not a sheeple. Um, you know, you found your way somehow to, to get, you know, open-minded and to give, you know, the non-paradigm, you know, thought police, you know, you resist them. So the reality is, as Mike says, it's readily available. It's out there. What we don't want you doing though, um, is going to your gym and buying it from the bros. Okay. Don't, don't, don't talk to some dumb ass in your gym, you know, who, you know, wears big shirts or oversized shirts and, you know, is the shirt muscle guy and says, hey man, you need gear? Don't buy it from the guy that's selling it at your local gym. Don't buy it from somebody that you think might know somebody that sells it. Like Mike said, there's simple ways to get it. Research it, do your homework. Um, just be safe, you know. As he said, you know, don't 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 be ordering like gigantic supplies, you know, to your house. Oh, I'm gonna buy five years worth or any of that nonsense. You know, just be prudent, man. It's very simple to acquire stuff and not get in trouble. Right, and, and, and the truth is that the government knows what's going on. They know about these of sites. They, do. they go after the dealers. Again, I'm not telling. I'm not giving legal advice. I'm not saying you can't get in trouble. I'm not saying there aren't risks involved. But I'm saying that in my whole life of any kind of horror story, I've never heard of some guy who had three bottles of testosterone right. and that was all he had who got arrested. And right. even if he got arrested, it'd be a misdemeanor and it'd be like community service. So worst case scenario is that it's not treated that seriously because as bad as our drug laws are, there are some drugs that are treated differently than others. And the crucial distinction is never order enough that you can consider a distributor. Don't order it for your friends. Fuck them. If they don't right. want to order their own shit, Who cares? fuck them. That, that, they don't want to. Well, fine. They don't, they don't get it. That means they want you to take the fall for them. Because even if you just order it for a friend, guess what? It doesn't matter if you're making a profit. You're still a drug dealer because you're distributing it. You're taking it for yourself and you're giving it to other people. Don't do that. Get your own stuff. You'll be fine. Yeah, totally. Mike's right. I mean, um, if you are ordering, you know, a, a, a personal supply of something, you know, keep it small, keep it under three or four months, maybe up to six months. But um, the reality is, is like Mike says, you know, just be prudent when you're smart. Yeah, it's about not being an idiot, not trying to profiteer. And, and whatever, dude, it's fine. Now, next question. Can you give me the names of anti-aging clinics that charge a certain amount of money a month? I've been researching for a few weeks now and the cheapest I'm able to find is around 200 a month. Okay, 
I don't know what you're looking for, but you can go to the Beverly Hills Anti-Aging Center in Beverly Hills, California, zip code 90210, yep. and they're going to charge you an annual fee of 800 bucks. Well, yep. that obviously divided by 12 isn't 200 bucks, and then they're, they're going to charge you for your, for your gear. Your so product, they're going to charge yeah. you for your tasks and your needles and everything else. So even if you come out to Beverly Hills and get your stuff, and that's if you live in Southern California, that's where I recommend you go. Um, that, that's where I go. It's a great place. That's where you should go. It's not that expensive, and then you pay for your own gear. And as far as the rest of the country, there's a guy called Dr. Jeffrey Life. Go to Dr. Life's website. He has a whole network of people who provide anti-aging services. Anti-aging clinics are big in Vegas, California, Florida. Okay, let's say you're in Idaho. You live in Cedar Rapids, and you're on a farm, and your fucking doctor is a woman who wants to give you 200 milligrams of a test a month. <laughs> All right, bro, I'm going to tell you. Your health is your priority. Save up and buy a plane ticket to Vegas and save up to go visit an actual (laughs) real medical practitioner and get on a plane and fly out there and and party in Vegas a little bit and then go see, go to Dr. Life's clinic or go to one of the other numerous clinics in Vegas. But fuck, dude, don't just sit home. I can't, I don't care if you can't find one 30 minutes. You know, that's life, dude. Like it took me years to learn what I know. So I'm giving you the info for free. The, The shit that you're getting here from me and Jay for free, that's the hard shit. That's the shit that took us fucking like... God, decades, decades. To, to figure out. Decades. So if you can't get on a plane and you can't go to Florida, you can't go to Cali, you can't go to Vegas, then I'm just sorry. I'm, I just don't care about you. I just don't really care what happens to you because you don't care enough about yourself to take action and change your life. Uh, that was epic. I, I can't really add anything to that. Next question. Okay, I think that is it on the – oh, one more for TRT. If you have low T and want to do a bodybuilding steroid cycle, is there – should you – Get your levels in the normal range first. Um, I think that goes back to what we talked about earlier. Nah, no. no, you just if you're gonna if you're gonna do gear, you're all in. Cruise, yeah, you're, you're all, all in. in or don't go. In. Now maybe the exception would be well, I just want to look good for spring break, but I don't. I don't know. It's kind of dumb. I, no. I don't know. If you just want to look good for spring break, you know, this, we probably should be listening to this podcast. Well, you know? well, really the, right. well, but the truth is though too is is that and Mike and I, you know always talk about this uh, I've been on longer than Mike you know and I remember him telling this until he felt it you know, himself but I mean once you're on test you ain't fucking coming off test I mean the life that you had before test and the life that you have after test are like two different lives I mean really I mean there's just no way that anybody who uses test correctly and has everything else dialed in is ever coming off test there's just it's no point in it Right, yeah. I mean, they say it's, just, it's testosterone addicting, and it's like, well, I don't know, is, is sex addicting? Like, <laughs> right. Are things that is like water necessary? Is money addicting? Like, are things that make your life better addicting? Well, I, I guess on one level, like, yeah, I could not take testosterone, and like, I'm not going to have withdrawals or the shakes or anything, but my life is just not going to be as good as it is. Well, it's like guys that want to drink every weekend. I mean. Right. Is it better to fucking drink every weekend, or is it better to inject twenty five to thirty milligrams? Of right, test? right. Or guys will say, or, or 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 guys will say, well, you only take tests. That's masculinity in a bottle. It's like, all right, and you gotta fucking drink beer because you're hanging out with women, and um, you're fucking eating meat with hormones in it. Right. And you uh fucking get pissed drunk. You probably smoke weed. You probably smoke cigarettes. I got no hate. If that's the life you want right. to live, that's fine. But if you're if you're fucking drinking alcohol, if you're drinking coffee, coffee's a Same drug. shit. Yeah. You're taking a drug, and that's your drug of choice. So don't try to fucking ride a high horse and become morally superior or act like you're not a fucking junkie. Because you are, and that's fine. Your life, bro. Do it. You want to do life-enhancing drugs or you want to do life-destroying drugs? It's your choice, man. Right. For me, it's an easy choice. And although at the beginning of the podcast, I said that we were going to talk about a bunch of other stuff, that was so much good TRT information that we're just going to end that segment here, and then we'll talk about training at another podcast. So thanks for tuning in, and thanks, Jay. Thanks, guys. Good talking to you.